Hi, this is Chris, and welcome to my channel, Great Northwest Comics. Today is a beautiful sunny day in the Pacific Northwest. It's uh, Saturday. I uh, was so excited that I picked up two new subscribers this last month that I decided to make an extra video. I was going to wait until next weekend after I went to another comic book store to, to buy some back issues, and I ended up going into Seattle today to uh, pick up some books, and I thought I'd go ahead and share them because I was just so excited about it. Uh, first off, uh, this one is Spawn 272. This is part of my Spawn run I'm doing. I got this one from eBay. And what was interesting with this one is that they listed it for like $50. And I did a, like a buy it now for offer, best offer for, so yeah, best offer for like $25. And they accepted it. So uh, unfortunately, Spawn books are a little expensive. And I think they're definitely overpriced online. And so I wouldn't normally pay that much um, for a book unless it's going to be uh, near mint and this one is close to it i'd say it's a near mint minus so it's not perfect but uh, really nice to add another um, book to the run uh, next up this is uh, green lantern I think this is issue 48 yes 48 very very nice minty condition got this one from joe at 360 comics uh, through one of his claim sales i also picked up dc comics presents 87 with uh, the first appearance of superboy prime but that one's actually off to the presser right now. Um, it had some uh, issues that I think can be pressed out and maybe uh, really bump that grade up. Um, I may not submit it to CGC, but I just wanted to fix it since I was sending a, a bunch, a batch to the comic book presser. Um, and just one clarification on the comic book presser's rates, make sure you check their website for the rates. I was saying like $25 per pressing in my last video, but it's really more like $12 and $18, I think are the two tiers that they have 18 is for the early 80s books and anything after that is like $12 um, I was saying 25 but I think in my head I was thinking like uh, I paid $18 plus I did the shipping to him and then I had to pay the shipping from him to CGC and then he also charges $10 if he submits the books for you and has to make it it's a, a label for me so submitting it for me on his submit it to CGC on my behalf but he's using his account so that's, that's why I was thinking $25 for some reason, but that's not the case. So check out the, his website, thecomicbookspresser.com, and uh, you can see what his rates are. So uh, this one's really cool. This one, this Green Lantern, is the first appearance of Kyle Rayner. Now, it doesn't actually say what his name in it. He's just like sitting on the, what's it, like on the beach yeah, or at a park with his girlfriend. And uh, so, but everybody says this is the first appearance, and I, it was a good price, so I thought I'd pick it up. So thanks, Joe, for that. Uh, next up, so the main reason I went to Seattle today was because Joe Rubenstein is in town. He was at a grumpy old man's comic book store uh, way up there in Seattle. And uh, so I thought, uh, since I had Mike Grell sign a number of my books, I would have Joe Rubenstein uh, sign a couple of my books. So Joe is, uh, I think, more commonly known for his Wolverine covers from the Wolverine, I think, the miniseries. I'm not sure if it's the miniseries or it's the... Uh, um, new title, his first solo title run, um, the very famous one with uh, Wolverine like going like this, and he's got his claws up, I think. And they, they had some copies there that I could have bought, but um, I already brought my own books to have signed, so I just wanted to go with um, with what I had. So uh, first up, this is uh, Legion of Superheroes 240, featuring the Grim Borth Chainsmen, and you can see Joe Rubenstein's uh, signature along his arm, which I think was a great place to put it. I asked him what work he did on the cover, and he said he was the inker on uh, the comic. He, um, which makes sense because on the interior of the cover co comic, it does say he's the inker, but it doesn't say like he did the cover inking. It said that, uh, you know, he did the inking on the interior. So I guess I was, you know, overthinking it. So anyways, uh, this book was also a surprise book. I bought this from, I think, a local comic book store, I think. And it's actually signed on the interior by Paul Levitz who did the, the writing for this. So very cool. So it's double signed. Uh, next up, this is the uh, my favorite uh, issue, 239. And I had this one signed by Mike Rell at SummerCon. And you can see Joe Rubenstein's signature down below. Um, so when I was talking to him, I told him that this is my favorite issue of Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. I love the cover. I love the artwork on the interior. Um, I love the story. And he said, oh, thanks so much. And he, he said that... Uh, Jim Starlin did the interior work, and he said that, um, I think he was referring to, uh, I'm not sure if he was referring to Superboy in the Legion of Superheroes or another DC title, but apparently he was unhappy when he was working on a 
page book and DC ended up cutting it down and he didn't like that so he ended up um, leaving shortly after that and then Joe actually followed um, with them to leave so I, I imagine they went to Marvel at that point then if they were unhappy with DC so well little, little interesting story uh, I didn't know about so if you ever get a chance to meet an artist do so because they always have those little nuggets of information and history so very cool and then you can do a YouTube channel and share it uh, what's this? Issue 224. Not again, Chris. Yes, this is probably my third or fourth copy uh, beyond, besides the fact that I have this in a CGC grade of like uh, 9.2, I believe. Um, I just love this cover. It's fantastic. I love the uh, the colors. I love the action. Uh, you know, who doesn't love Pulse, Polestar Stargrave? So, or Pulsar Stargrave. <laughs> Say that three times fast. So I had to pick it up there. And uh, you, if you see the price tags on here, I did pay this price for these. Um, I think when you shop in Seattle, you typically pay a little higher prices. Um, so I wasn't going to begrudge them a couple of dollars, but try to wheel and deal with them. And because uh, I know when I go to Vancouver to get um, some comics down there, typically I can find these ones for probably $8 each. But anyways, uh, very happy with the book so far that I've shown you. And uh, this is uh, First Appearance of Dawnstar, issue 226. Uh, great condition. I looked it over really quick. And, uh, I mean, this, like, you go on eBay, people want $40 for one that looks like they uh, left it outside for a while. You know, they're really bad. <laughs> so very happy to have another First Appearance of Dawnstar. Of course, I already have a 9.6 in a CBCS uh, slab. And these will all be uh, rebagged and boarded because that's what I always do when I get these. Uh, next up is, this is more of a filler issue. So this is uh, issue 232. And the reason why I picked this one up is because with my current run uh, in my collection, some of the copies have issues like they're VG to fine. And I'm really looking for uh, mid grade or higher. Just, and you know, if there are nine, nine O's, it's perfectly fine with that. So this is just a filler to replace one of the lesser grade copies. Um, this one, issue 233, is the first appearance of the Infinite Man, a really, I think a really cool villain that was, uh, uh, his life expectancy was cut really short apparently in, the, in this one, uh, or his time in the time continuum, <laughs> he was displaced in it, and so that's why he was gone for such a long time, the, Le the Legion somehow got him to go through an infinite loop or something, I forget, I haven't read it in a while, but uh, really cool cover, and uh, really cool villain. So I always pick this up when I see it too. And it's a really nice grade as well. Uh, one thing I didn't mention too. So what I look for on these books is that if you notice the, the white along the sides there, I always look to make sure that it's not tanned or soiled from heavy reading. And that some of the, that's some of the issues I have with the ones in my collection that they're uh, definitely been read and well loved. And they, so they have the soiling or staining from your hands or from tanning from... Um, Natural aging, I guess. Uh, next up, this is another one, two, 230. And this one, uh, I may not have needed to buy this one because I think I already have a good copy. I think I confused this with 235, which is a similar color palette, but it actually has Superboy sitting in the middle in a chair looking like he's being brainwashed or tortured by the Legion. And, uh, but this is such a high quality one, I decided to pick it up anyways, just on the off chance that I do need it for my collection. And then I picked up uh, Supergirl, Girl of, Woman of Tomorrow. Uh, issue number four is a Rose Besh cover. This one's, uh, I just love the cover. I had bought one through eBay a while back and was unhappy with it. And then I found a local comic book store, went there, bought a copy, got it home. And I was like, I missed, I totally missed um, a main issue on it so I was really unhappy that I had another bad copy so third time's a charm this one's a keeper really love this cover uh, next up uh, I was surprised I found this uh, just sitting in one of the, the one of their bins um, everybody talks uh, about what a great story this is and that you should pick this up and read it and I'd never have I don't believe I have unless I read it as a digital copy uh, so this is which is number one not sure how many issues there are. Like, I think they had one and four there, but they didn't have any other ones. So maybe it's a, a four uh, book series. So I just, you know, sometimes when you see it, you might as well just buy it. And uh, if I like the story, I will pick up the rest. So very cool. 
Uh, the, the last book here I've been saving, I think you'll really like, especially if you love Marvel books. You know I don't buy too many of them. And uh, you know I've been picking up um, some books uh, for uh, the Black Suit Spider-Man. And I've been looking for this one for a while. So I think if you watched my last video, you probably know I've been on the lookout for it. So here it is. Marvel Team Up 141 featuring the black suit, suited Spider-Man on the cover with uh, Black Widow and Daredevil. And it's a direct edition. So all you people who love that, you know, don't love those barcodes. No, no, go with direct edition. Get a little extra artwork. <laughs> just kidding, just do whatever you want. Um, I worked in retail, so I guess that barcodes were always kind of ugly and reminded me of working on the sales floor because it, the, the only purpose of a barcode is just to scan it for, for the register. And uh, so when they started doing the direct editions and doing the little artwork, I always picked up the artwork once. <laughs> I'm not saying this is like fantastic artwork or anything, but uh, that, that's just my philosophy. I know everybody says that uh, it's harder to find um, the um, barcodes in, or newsstand, sorry, newsstand, not barcode, newsstand editions in higher grades and uh, because they were sitting on a newsstand. And so let's see, let's do this real quick. Um, so all three of my Spider-Man books, The Secret Wars 8, The Amazing Spider-Man 252 are direct editions. I need to pick up that other one. I think it's The Spectacular Spider-Man that has a black cat on it uh, bouncing around on, on the cover. And that's uh, arguably the in the run for the first appearance of the black suit Spider-Man because of the way it was released. So this one, uh, they told me specifically to take it out of the bag uh, to take a look at it because there might be some issues with with uh, the pages or with the cover. And, and there is, and I looked it over, and they're, very, they're all pressable defects. I think that has, uh, has one little dog ear in the corner, two color-breaking spine ticks. So yeah, I'm sure the camera's not going to pick it up, but... Over here in this upper corner, just a tiny, tiny little, tiny, tiny, tiny little um, dog ear right there that breaks color. So, which is too bad, but I mean, it's not going to do much uh, for the grade. Um, let's see, does it have a little tear there as well? I'm not sure if it's a tear or a color breaking um, little spine tick as well. I don't want to push it too much. I don't want that corner to come off. So, I would, I would put this book. Um, between an 8.5 and a 9.0. And uh, after I clean it up a little bit, um, I'll probably send it in to get it pressed and maybe submit it to have a grave. So one, two, three, spine ticks. What's the back look like? The back, the back's always weird because like they, if you see the white down below, it kind of looks dirty, but I, I don't think it's dirt. I think it's the way they printed it with like that gray palette to it like it's just how it's been printed but there's no there's only one there's one two little spine ticks there staples are uh placed very well yeah so i'd say eight five to nine oh easily um i forgot to mention that this is the poly watch uh, paste that i was talking about in my last video this is what i used to clean my cgc slabs or uh, buff them out, buff up the defects and the scratches and stuff. So it's, um, you can buy it as a little kit for like maybe 15 to $20. And it's just this like kind of like clear or kind of milky looking uh, paste. I don't know if the camera will pick that up or not. And what you do is you put it on the area you want to polish. And then it comes with a little polishing cloth. And you just, um, rub it uh, gently for like 30 seconds. And it takes out most scratches and little dings and stuff like that. And it also came with a, like a Dremel piece, it looks like. And maybe this is for bigger uh, items, but you would not use this on a, on a slab, no way. So very, very happy with the results using this. Um, it's not a lot in here, but it goes a long way. So very happy with this book. Put it back in the bag before I destroy it. <laughs> I think for the price that I paid, I think it was a, a decent price. When I uh, was looking online, shopping online, uh, everybody was asking like 80 bucks or higher for it. And the junkie copies were going for 40 to 50. I say junkie because there's like, 
you could clearly see the issues um, and it wasn't to me worth buying. So anyways, very happy with this pickup. Uh, uh, just get that one more, I think, with the, the Peter Parker's Protector Spider-Man and I'm done with uh, the black suit run um, until I try to pick up, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 300. I don't know if I can do it. That's a pretty expensive book, but I, I want to get it in a, in a raw book too. So did they have that one there too? I can't remember if they had that one there too or not. They, they they had a great selection and maybe some of their higher price books, maybe they didn't have them quite out for me to see. I didn't ask. And uh, uh, maybe next time when I go in, I, I will, because eventually I'll pick that up, but probably next year. Um, so anyways, um, so I, I really appreciate you sticking around. If you're still watching at the end of this video, I really appreciate the fact that I picked up two new subscribers. I hope you like this video. And if you wanna leave a positive comment or tell me something cool that you recently picked up from a local comic book store, that would be great. So I hope you have a great weekend.